Frank Ski, Jade Nova, and JR. And in the studio with us, Dr. Jennifer Kowas is here. We've been telling you she is the medical director at Emory Reproductive Center. Uh, welcome to the show. Good morning. Yes. Welcome, so do welcome. me a favor. What is an endocrinologist? An endocrinologist is someone that thinks about uh, hormones and how the reproductive system works. So that's different from just a gynecologist, right? Correct. So after doing OBGYN training, you can do an extra three years of training where you just learn about fertility and how the uh, reproductive system works. Mm. So we're talking about reproduction because what we have seen and our research and planning this show was that there are a lot of people, especially in Atlanta, that struggle with infertility. It's insane. And what is infertility? Infertility is uh, defined as having trouble getting pregnant if you've been trying for 12 or more months. So having unprotected sex for 12 months without getting pregnant. And actually, if someone is 35 or older, um, we even define it as six months of trying without getting pregnant. Really? Wow. Why, why when you get older? So as a woman gets older, it becomes harder and harder to get pregnant and our treatments that are available become less and less effective. So we'd like to help women as early as we can. So, okay, so my, I'm just setting up some information here. So what I was explained is that when a, uh, a man reproduces sperm all the time, but women don't reproduce eggs, how does that work? Yes, you're exactly right. So... <laughs> Uh, men make new sperm all the time, and that's why you can see very old men having children when they're very old. And they do, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, women, on the other hand, are born with sort of a limited number of eggs. Um, and all the eggs that you have are, are there when you're born. And over the course of your life, whether you use birth control or don't use birth control, sort of no matter what you do, the number of eggs that you have gets lower and lower over time. So basically, as you get older, you, you produce less eggs in order for them to get um, fertilized. fertilized? Yeah, so you still produce one egg each month for it to get fertilized, but you have less eggs available because the average woman hits menopause around age 50. Um, and so a common misconception is sort of that fertility treatment and IVF works no matter how old you are, but we're still limited by the fact that the eggs are what predict the chance of success with fertility treatment. Okay, so so I, I, I want to say this, and I do want to open up the phone lines if we can. 404-741-WVEE, that's our number. 404-741-WVEE. So Jade and JR, I met Jennifer mm -hmm. when the first time I had met my wife, Patrice. When I first met her, in our discussion, she told me that she was in the process of fertilizing her eggs. Or freezing them. And freezing, freezing her eggs, yes. yes. And I was like, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to freeze your eggs? And I realized it was more common than I thought it was. Yeah. Why would a woman freeze her eggs? That's a great question. <laughs> um, so a woman would freeze her eggs if she's in a position where she's not quite yet ready to get pregnant, but she knows that it's important to her later in her life to be able to try to get pregnant with her own eggs. Um, as women get older, because the eggs tend to be less effective, if you freeze your eggs when you're younger, it gives some women the opportunity to try to get pregnant later in life if they haven't met the person with whom they're ready to have a baby. Wow. It's wow. A just in case. It's a just in case. That, it's kind of like an insurance plan. Yeah, that sounds expensive though, right? I'm sure that's something that most people can't afford. Am I correct? You're correct that it is expensive and it depends um, on who you work for and what state you live in in right. terms of whether or not it's covered by insurance. The cost of the procedure itself, so the freezing, is probably somewhere around five or $6,000. Okay. Um, and the cost of the medicine can vary a lot um, depending on what your egg count is and how much medicine you need to make it work. Right. Um, so it can range, I'd say, at the lower end, five $6,000 for the procedure. Okay. Um, that's about how much it costs at Emory. Um, and then the medication can range, but sometimes the insurance covers parts and not all, so they might cover your medication, but not necessarily the freezing part. Now, now the medicine, this is in preparation for the procedure. Correct. Um, so you take um, about 10 to 12 days of injectable medication where you're giving yourself medicine once a night um, to help 
the follicles, which are the part of your ovary but that contain the egg, grow so that when you have this thing called an egg retrieval, which is when we get the eggs, that the eggs that you get will be mature and able to be frozen. Yeah, I remember seeing this on Being Mary Jane, and it's crazy because Gabrielle Union played the role, but she also dealt with infertility in, in, in her, um, you know, trying to get pregnant with her husband. So that's really crazy. I, I had no idea that it was plaguing so many black women. Yeah, infertility is very common. It affects about 15% of the population. And as women get older, the percentage probably goes up. Mm -hmm. um, and it affects all women equally. So mm -hmm. it's not a disease of only one race or one ethnicity. It, okay. It's very common and it affects all all women. Yeah. So let me ask a question. If, if for instance, um, Kalia, how old are you, Kalia? Kalia is 22. The average 22-year-old woman goes in for egg retrieval. How many eggs can you get? Um, well, it depends a lot. It varies a lot from one person to the next. Um, <laughs> I'd say the number of eggs you need probably varies depending on your age. So the potential of each egg is greater when you're younger. Okay. So every like six or eight eggs ultimately after you fertilize it and make an embryo might end up being one embryo. So a 22-year-old um, who freezes eggs might from 15 eggs have two chances at getting pregnant have a 75 80 percent chance of getting pregnant but if you take a 40 year old who freezes 15 eggs they might end up with maybe two chances but their chance of pregnancy is going to be maybe 30 percent instead mm. of 75 percent because um, of the age of her because of the age of the eggs so the chance of pregnancy is based on the age you are when you get the eggs um, I would also say this doesn't mean that everyone should just go out and freeze eggs. So when you're young, you know, if you were 22 and single, you have a long chance where you still might meet someone and never need to see a fertility doctor. Okay. So it's a reasonable thing to start thinking about maybe when you're 30, 32, 33, where the chance of success is still high. Um, but I'd say t most 22 year olds can just wait and see if they meet someone and <laughs> right. save themselves some money. One question is that we've seen Dr. Kawas is, especially with 70% of African-American women having fibroid problems. Why is that an issue when it comes to infertility? That's a great question. Um, it's true, fibroids are more common among African-American women than women of other ethnicities. Um, and there are many women that have fibroids that get pregnant with no trouble at all. So just because you have fibroids, it doesn't mean you're going to have trouble getting pregnant or that you need to see a fertility doctor. Um, but at the same time, the size of the fibroids and the location of the fibroids can sometimes affect um, how easy or hard it is to get pregnant and then also sort of risk of miscarriage and other things that can be tricky during pregnancy. Wow. Yeah, and I also had a question. Well, not even a question, um, just proactive measures. Like, um, there are things that we can do, right, to help uh, the process when we decide that we want to go ahead and freeze our eggs or, you know, deal with fertility issues. Is there any diet or, or prenatal vitamins or things that we can take to be proactive to increase our chances? Another great question. Um, it's true that before you get pregnant and if you're actively trying to get pregnant, you sort of want to be as healthy as you can be before okay. you get pregnant. So this means, you know, starting to take a prenatal vitamin once a day, um, trying to sort of eat well and exercise well, nothing too extreme, but, you know, having habits that you know are generally healthy. Um, some things that can also help is sort of paying attention to the time between your cycles, so whether or not they come regularly or irregularly. If they're not predictable at all, um, it might make sense to talk to your OBGYN to see whether or not you're ovulating or releasing an egg. Mm. If they're totally regular and predictable, you probably are ovulating about in the middle of your cycle and are going to want to maximize sort of trying to get pregnant right before you ovulate. So is there a correlation between irregular um, period, menstrual cycles and infertility? Yes, um, there is. Wow, that's crazy. Let's go to the phones. Good morning, Celia. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good morning. I'm well, thank you. Go ahead with your question. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm out of breath. Hold on. <laughs> oh, you're pregnant? <laughs> yes, I'm pregnant with triplets. Oh, girl, I bet you out of breath. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I was calling because, um, like I said, I'm pregnant, with, currently pregnant with triplets. This is like my sixth pregnancy. Wow. And um, yes, I wanted to know how I can donate some eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you fertile girl. Yes. 
<laughs> Congratulations, first off. That's great. Thank you. Thank um, you so that's a very generous offer. Um, you are very kind to offer to donate eggs. Um, it is something that we do at Emory and that's done at all the reproductive centers around Atlanta. Um, there's usually a place online where you can sign up. Ideally, we're sort of looking for donors that are between the ages of 21 and 30. Um, uh -huh. And then you start by meeting a doctor and meeting with a nurse and answering some questions and we can tell you about the process so you'd know what you would be signing up for. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's something that still in, you're still interested in, um, we'd be happy to have you. Oh, yes. And what's the website? Um, if you go to emoryivf.org, mm -hmm. there's a link. Or if you Google Emory Egg Donor. I'm very interested in helping other women that need help. That's Thank beautiful. You. That's very nice of you. Do they get paid for doing that? They do get paid. There's compensation for egg donors. It's usually about $6,000 for the first time you try. Whoa. All right. I'm going to change jobs then. All right. Uh, All right. Be an egg donor, Jay. Yes, a professional $6, egg donor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Stella, what's your comment? Hi. Um, I'm calling regarding um, just wanting to know if you were told that your eggs is great, you've been checking for years, and you're your husband just unable to get pregnant, what do you do in that instance? So that's a great question. Um, it's important to know that infertility is not always the woman's problem. Um, it's about 30% related to women, 30% related to the man, and 40% of the time we actually check everything and we can't figure figure out exactly what's making it hard to get pregnant. Um, so if you've been trying to get pregnant for six months, if you're over 35 or more than 12 months, if you're under 35, um, it's reasonable to see your OBGYN or to see a fertility specialist. And we can sort of work through trying to figure out, is it related to the man? Is it related to the woman? Um, and after we do the testing, you know, an important thing to know is that we often start with less expensive, less aggressive things. So the goal is not that every patient goes straight to IVF. Um, there are these things called intrauterine insemination or IUIs um, that can be done where you take a little bit of medicine to maybe make some more eggs and then um, we do an insemination and so this we sort of go piece by piece and start with the least expensive least aggr aggressive thing we can do first and then sort of go up the pyramid if you need to okay okay so there's a specialist that you would see for that then yeah we're called um reproductive endocrinologists and you usually don't need a referral to see us. It's often covered by insurance, just like the new patient consult. Sometimes it's not, and that can be very frustrating. Um, it can be very expensive for your first appointment. But if it's covered by your insurance, it should be just like any other specialist where you would just pay your copay. And often the diagnostic testing, which is sort of when we're trying to figure out why, things aren't working is covered by most insurance. I'd say probably more than 90, 95%. It's the treatment where you like actually do the inseminations or do the IVF that varies a lot, um, depending on what company you work for and what state you live in. Thank you so much, that of was really course. helpful. We are joined by Dr. Jennifer Kawas. She is the medical director of Emory Reproductive Center. What is the website for people to get information to find you or uh, your office? It's www.emory.com ivf.org all right so question what is ivf ivf is short for in vitro fertilization so that just means that you're taking eggs out of the female body sperm out of the male's body making an embryo in a lab um, and then letting it grow over time and then taking the embryo and putting it in the woman's okay, uterus. Okay, back up. Say that one more time. <laughs> I want everybody to understand this. Say that one more time. What is IVF? So IVF is in vitro fertilization, where you're taking eggs from the woman, sperm from a man, making an embryo, letting it grow over time. You're making the embryo where? In a lab, so outside of the human body. Can I, can I ask how, how long the embryo is outside of the body before it's implanted in the woman's uterus? That's a uh, good question. It's about five days usually. It's considered a blastocyst at that point. A blastocyst. <laughs> okay, so you take the female egg mm -hmm. and the male sperm. Mm -hmm. You fertilize it. Mm -hmm. Okay, before that process happens, are the female eggs tested and the male sperm tested? Oftentimes, we wait to do testing or offer testing until you form an embryo. Okay. And an embryo can be tested. It's not mandatory, but there are. it is an option. And you can test for specific diseases, like if two people have sickle cell trait and they want to have a baby that doesn't have sickle cell disease, that would be a good reason to do the testing. Or if someone's had lots of miscarriages and they want some better reassurance before they get pregnant that their miscarriage risk can be lower, 
That would be another reason to do the testing. Okay. So you said miscarriage. Why does the body, a female body, miscarriage? That's another good question. Uh, miscarriage is often a good way to think of it is that the body is trying to protect you in the long run. So oftentimes miscarriage um, occurs because the fetus or the baby would not be healthy. So it's kind oh. of nature's way of, of protecting you. It's very hard to go through. Um, and a terrible thing to endure. But the, the one thing to sort of focus on and think about is the babies that don't miscarry are the ones that are more likely to be healthy and and do well. So wow. you go through this IVF. So somebody comes to you and they say, okay, we're going to go through IVF. You you do an egg retrieval. Mm -hmm. And then the the man fertilizes the egg at that point? So the man produces a specimen. And in an embryology lab, they sort of... If you, um, one way to do it is that sperm that sort of looks the best is swimming straight, um, is picked and used to actually fertilize one specific egg. An alternative is that the sperm can just be put sort of in a petri dish with the egg and whichever sperm fertilizes it, fertilizes it. Okay. And then after that point, then you put it back in. Then you have embryos and then you let them grow over five days. Five days. Same um, learning. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> and then now do, do some women... Um, freeze the embryos? Correct. So any embryos that are left over um, can be frozen. Mm. And then the chance of pregnancy, miscarriage, Down syndrome, all those things are based on the age that the woman was when she first did the IVF. Do people buy other people's embryos? So there is something called embryo donation. They're not bought. They're actually donated. So let's say a couple does IVF, has their one, two babies, and then they have extra embryos left over that they um, don't want to use for themselves, but they also don't want to keep frozen and don't want to discard. They do have the option to donate those embryos um, to either research or to another couple. And, and how many women, I mean, we see so many times older women, mm -hmm. you know, you see these older women having babies. How does that happen? That's a very good question. So... As we talked about at the very beginning of the show, the age of the egg is the biggest predictor of success with IVF. Um, as women get older and older, even with IVF, it can be really hard to get pregnant unless you are um, using donor eggs. So it is possible to use the eggs of a younger woman, fertilize them with the sperm of someone's partner or whomever they choose, mm -hmm. um, to create an embryo that then has the chance of success of a younger female. So is there an age limit for um, a woman to have IVF? That's a good question. It probably varies from one center to another. Okay. But generally speaking, most centers will say at the average age of menopause, which is about 50, it is um, a sort of a cutoff, 50, 52, where you wouldn't have uh pregnancy after donor egg even. Okay. Go ahead with your question. If you have not started menopause, are your eggs still good? Angie, great question. Um, I'd say age matters more than anything. So it's true that if you're cycling and you're having regular periods, you're always um, at risk or have the chance of getting pregnant. But the quality of a woman's eggs is really just dependent mostly on her age. Okay. All righty. Seems to be a mystery. Y'all have a good day. You too. Valerie, what's your question? Yes. My question is, I'm age 40, and in the last two years, I've had five miscarriages. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I would like to have another baby, and I would like to know what steps um, should I try to go into getting pregnant? Valerie, I'm so sorry. Um, that's a, a great question as well. Miscarriage is a very, very difficult thing um, to go through, and it's important to understand and know that it, it's not your fault and nothing that you've done that's made you have this miscarriage or all these miscarriages. Um, in fertility clinics, we actually do see patients with what we call recurrent pregnancy loss or when someone has had two or more more miscarriages. So mm -hmm. it, it would actually be very reasonable to see a fertility doctor because we can try to figure out if there's anything that we can do to help prevent future risk of miscarriage. Sometimes, honestly, it's it's just bad luck and we can help you keep trying. Um, but okay. we can also make sure that there's nothing else that can be done. There are definitely certain factors, um, you know, whether it's something related to the uterus or something related with your thyroid or your hormones or something like that, that we can look into. Um, but we can also maybe even even just offer reassurance that there's nothing to fix and we can help you keep trying. But I'm so sorry for what you've been through and we would be happy to help you. Okay, thank you.
Thank you. Okay, our number, 404-741-WVEE. Dr. Jennifer Kawas, Medical Director, Emory Reproductive Center, Assistant Professor, Division of Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility, Clinical Director of the Society for Assisted Reproductive Technology, and Guest Researchers at the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Amazing. Thank you very much. And you look about 20, so I don't know how you have all these different things on your thing, but (laughs) thank you for spending time with us. Thank you. It was fun. We appreciate it. And and thank you to your office for allowing you and Emory University for allowing you to come and, and be with us today. Thank you. We so appreciate much. it. So again, people can go and see you. Um, the initial consultation should be covered under insurance and as a copay. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can let people know ahead of time whether it is or isn't. Correct. And it, it is good to come in if you're having problems based upon what again? Time period yep. of if you've been trying for about six months or more, if you're 35 and older, or 12 months or more, or if you're having recurrent miscarriages, we'd be happy to see you. And just because you see us doesn't mean we'll force you to do anything. You can come see us, get information, and decide whether you want to move forward with treatment or not. So so you're saying if you're 35 and older, it's six months. And if you're under 35, it's 12. If we have a better chance of conceiving younger, why is it shorter when you're older? Because it's pretty similar when you're 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. And okay. as you get older, it's when... And the, it becomes harder and harder. Mm. Okay, understood.